Hello, Lisa Jackson here of Culture Pros with another video on creating the modern workplace. Today, I want to discuss a somewhat sensitive and difficult topic, sexual harassment in the workplace, and especially what to do if you feel you're a victim of it. I've been pondering for some time what I want to say about this epidemic in workplaces. And after New York Governor Andrew Cuomo resigned yesterday, stating, in my mind, I've never crossed the line with anyone, but I didn't realize the extent to which the lines have been redrawn. And yes, Andy, they have indeed been redrawn. What you, Mr. Cuomo, might consider friendly or incidental physical contact and comments that were normal for men of my generation, that no longer cuts it as an excuse for blurring the lines between professional connection and conversation and bar talk. With five generations in the workplace, this is a serious problem and it needs to be made safe to talk about. So I'm gonna wade in and share what I feel about it. For all the women who feel that they may have been harassed, who know that they've been harassed, who are afraid to speak up about it because of what will happen. First and foremost, I want you to know any workplace that tolerates this kind of behavior where you feel scared, where you feel you can't do your job effectively because of someone else targeting specifically based on your gender, based on your um, show up in the workplace in any way, that is a toxic workplace. That is not a great place to work. That is not a best place to work. And if your company has that designation, please don't be confused. If that's tolerated in your organization, it is toxic. Secondly, the Me Too movement, fortunately, continues to shine the spotlight on this type of behavior. We're getting a little bit more inch by inch brave in our ability to talk about it. It's what dating back to 2017, when Susan Fowler published the blog, My Very Stranger at Uber, if you haven't read it, it's a really powerful story that set, uh, her actions set off the founding CEO of Uber being ousted and a massive turnaround in that organization. Honestly, I don't know today if it's actually any better, but she is. So we know there's that. Then fast forward to eight months later when the New York Times published a um, uh, explosive claims about the serial sexual abuse of Harvey Weinstein. That was when the hashtag Me Too movement was born. Coming forward to 2021, the harassment hasn't stopped, even though the stigma associated with it is perhaps overarchingly a bit less than it was a decade ago. I'm aware of multiple examples of this in my work around culture, aimed at people who are typical holders of power in the work, who are not typical holders of power in the workplace. I'm not against Caucasian males in power. I wanna say that out of the gate. In fact, I think many white males deserve the positions that they're in. They do great and astonishing and amazing things in the workplace and are advocates of women. So this is not calling out white male power. I, in fact, I raised a Caucasian son, who I'm proud to say is a racial activist in particular, supports actively the rights of black and Hispanic people. What I am against is the shrug it off, suck it up attitude that seems to be prevalent still in the workplace and that pits HR against senior leadership versus the employees in the workplace, because that bad behavior puts HR in the middle. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later, and it's not the solution. Anyone who uses their power or will to force or diminish the will or power of another, that needs to stop and that is toxic. So today I'm gonna to suggest several concrete actions that you can consider if you're in this situation. Only you will know what to do. I am not putting these in some form of order or saying do them by the letter, but they are proven. I've been coaching people for many years and this has come across my um, practice more than one time, multiple times. And so these have form formulated out of what I know the women that I have coached have done that has helped them. Action number one, 
tell someone, not just anyone, tell someone outside the company, preferably initially, who's in your trusted inner circle. Someone you feel is, and no, not feel, no, no for sure is safe, safe to talk about this. Maybe it's a professional coach or a counselor. Giving voice to the fact this happened is one of the hardest steps to take because for many, it it really surfaces this shame, this feeling like, did I cause this? This the, the feelings that go along with having been through um, a very, very um, diminishing and defeating experience in your life. So know that telling someone makes it real and giving voice to the fact that it happened I wouldn't start with the HR department in your company. I've spoken earlier a minute about that for two reasons. The first is they work for the company, not for you. And that doesn't mean that they aren't caring about the people in the organization. But as said, they are often pitted against senior management and the employees and put in the middle of that situation. And depending on whether they've been there for a long time, they may even be a part of the culture that's creating this environment. I know that was certainly true in the case of Susan Fowler at Uber. The most powerful thing about this step, this action is that you are not imagining this, that this is real. So telling someone brings a voice to it and creates an opportunity for you to start healing. I thought it was a really powerful story. Ellen DeGeneres was recently interviewed on David Letterman's uh, My Next Guest show, and she revealed that her stepfather had perpetuated serial abuse on her during her teenage years. And she said, the only reason that I am coming forward in such a public way to share this story is because I want young women everywhere to understand and know this is not okay, and this is not normal. Action number two, write down what happened. And in this, I would suggest that you do it in a journal, that you don't do it on your computer, especially not your work computer, um, but get, get clear about the facts and the feelings and the, do your best to pull the two apart. Initially, if it were me, I would just be writing and I wouldn't worry about sorting that out, but you do want to have somewhat of a account, a factual account in case there is action taken later, the fresher that is in your memory, the better. Action number three, this is about claiming your power. This is not about blowing the whistle. So really, really important to make the distinction between those two things and pull those apart. One of the biggest reasons that mad men behavior continues in workplaces is because men get away with it. If you're in a place of personal power, you're not scared of what someone else is doing to you. You're not scared of what they're thinking. You're not scared of the retaliation. You're not scared of losing your job because it's worth far less than your own self-respect. I know claiming your power is not always easy. It may not begin with a legal claim or an HR report. It may begin with you getting clear in your own experience what happened. And my plea is that you won't shrink from it, that you will find a way to talk to yourself in kind terms about this to own the power that you have from within. Listen to media that helps you do that. Find examples of others who've been through this and who have done that. It's important that you start to heal through claiming your own power in this. Whatever that leads to, allow it to unfold. Action number four, if you have a professional colleague who is in the HR field that's outside the company, I would start there. And th there's a lot of different rules around this, around workplace behavior, varying from state to state, understanding what the legal environment is, what could or might happen. If you want to hire a lawyer, that's great. Um, it, it's really just in your own experience gaining the knowledge of what the legalities of it are and what the potential step-by-step -step process is if you do choose to come forward. As I mentioned before, HR is often caught in this middle um, between the backlash of senior management in the organization, especially if it's a senior manager or a high performer that is the 
perpetrator in this case and the people. And most HR people will tell you they really feel caught in the middle in that conundrum, that it isn't just a simple, well, I need to support the company, I need to support the person. It's a very difficult position to play that they are placed in. So if you can find someone outside your organization um, to help be on, that can be honest with you, that's ideal. Action number five is simple. Make a decision. This is blow the whistle or leave. These are really the only two choices to ensure that this kind of situation doesn't happen to you again in this organization. You may have to endure a period of time before you make that decision, only you can know again, but don't put the decision off hoping that the thing will just get swept under the carpet because it won't. Action number six, don't allow anyone to minimize what happened. Oh, that's just boys being boys or similar cliches usually offered as mansplaining by either men or women whose attitude is, I put up with it and so can you. Cuomo denying his accusers while conceding, I offended some of my accusers with what I considered friendly or incidental physical contact and comments that were normal for men of my generation, it doesn't cut it. If you're uncomfortable with how you're being treated in the workplace by someone in power, the workplace is toxic, whether it's sexual harassment or just plain abusive, coercive, demeaning, bad boss behavior. And you should remove yourself from that situation because you're worth more. The only way harassment in workplaces will end and be eradicated for the long term is when there's a real consequence behind it. Action number seven, Ensure that you have the support to stand your ground. Susan Fowler, Christine Blasey Ford, the New York Times journalist who exposed Harvey Weinstein, Ellen, none of them were prepared for what would happen to them as a result of speaking up. But every one of them had a support around them to, neg to navigate the storm, find your tribe and get support. Action number eight, Expect blowback. That's part of the that's part of the pushback in any big change. You're going to have those two forces colliding. Not everyone will be a fan. Not everyone is going to believe your story. Not everybody is going to want to support you, and that's okay. Be discerning about who you tell and the details that you share with them. And again, and make sure that you have a few supportive people around you who really do not only believe you but who care about your well-being moving forward into the future. And finally, the last action number nine, self-care, self-care, self-care. These actions may not solve the whole problem. Um, they are designed to help you create your own readiness to stand up against insensitive, arrogant, mean bullying in the workplace and change the fact that they can get away with it. As someone who's both witnessed and been through sexual harassment, anything that helps you claim your power without further humiliation, in my opinion, is worth the risk. But only you can know what that looks like. So here's to the courage and self-respect for the most important person in your life, yourself. If this video resonates, think of who you might wanna share it with that would resonate with as well. Um, please like and comment so we can have more exposure to these ideas. And I'll see you on the next video about creating a healthy modern workplace. Take care.